Now, a Democratic presidential candidate makes a stop in Madison today. The issues he and his brother spoke about. And a man is arrested for allegedly burning down a synagogue in Duluth. Plus, how apple orchards in southern Wisconsin are dealing with changing growing conditions. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 10. Thanks for joining News 3 Now at 10. I'm Amanda Quintana. The Castro brothers are in Madison today for the Cap Times Idea Fest, the two-day event with over 90 speakers at the UW campus featuring talks that will explore their theme of how to reach a better state. Gabriela Becerra joins us to share some of the ideas they brought to the stage today. Gabby? Democratic presidential candidate Julian Castro brought forward some of the policies he would enact if he is elected president in 2020. And his brother, Congressman Joaquin Castro, also weighed in on issues pressing the nation. The brothers spoke about immigration. Julian Castro says he would initiate a softer approach to immigrants illegally crossing the border. In my vision of things, it, when somebody crosses the border without permission, it would still be against the law. It would just be enforced in a civil process and not a criminal one. And while Wisconsin isn't a border state, he says citizens can still be active by using their voice to speak out about different perspectives and taking their opinion to the voting booth. Obviously the way people vote, is the most important thing and to get people out to vote because we absolutely no matter what happens in 2020 have to defeat Donald Trump so that we're going to have a different uh, president. Another issue pressing the nation gun control. A lot of the gun violence that happens you know is, is not only in the mass shooting context that's not most of it most of it happens in our neighborhoods. You know Joaquin and I grew up in, in these neighborhoods where it was not uncommon to hear gunshots in the neighborhood. Castro says his plan to disarm hate includes universal background checks, an assault weapons ban, a seven day waiting period, limiting capacity magazines and increasing taxes on guns and ammunition. Also the issue of homelessness. My plan would invest those kinds of resources and effort and coordination into not only ending veteran homelessness, but family homelessness, chronic homelessness, youth homelessness. Uh, by 2028. Castro says this can be done by working with the state and city leaders on policies that actually work. Julian Castro says if he is elected, his first act as president would be to sign the Paris Climate Accord, but not before walking President Donald Trump out of the White House. All right, thank you so much for covering that for us, Gabby. Mm -hmm. Let's turn it over to Dave Caulfield with your first alert forecast. Dave, I understand you're, you're watching some storms head our way. Yeah, they are across northeastern Iowa right now, Amanda, but could track into far southern Wisconsin, Illinois state line and provide some heavy rain for areas that just don't need any more of that after the week that we've had with so many thunderstorms and showers rolling through. Doppler tracks still quiet, though, across southern Wisconsin. That could change over the next couple of hours. Temperatures are in the low 70s in Madison. That's significant because temperatures uh, are still kind of hanging out right around 70 degrees, so the clouds have increased. Also, plenty of warm air for these storms to tap into and potentially provide some heavy downpours. Live look in Madison on the Edgewater Skycam at overcast skies. And day planner as we head into early tomorrow morning. Chance of some showers and thunderstorms. Again, some of those could produce heavy rain. Also, some gusty winds and hail not out of the question. By the afternoon, we'll forget all about that. Temperatures will be in the upper 70s and low 80s with that humidity sticking around. We'll talk about what to expect as we head into next week in your first alert forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Dave. A woman in her 50s died overnight after getting hit by a car while riding her bike in Monona. It happened along West Broadway on the Yahara River Bridge around 1.30 in the morning. Before the crash, witnesses told police they saw the biker riding erratically. The driver of the vehicle is a 17-year-old Monona resident who police say was taken into custody but then later released. Several agencies are contributing in this investigation, but no other information is being released right now. This week marks one, the one-year anniversary of the workplace shooting at WTS Paradigm in Middleton. In the 12 months since, the responding officers and deputies have received national recognition. The company itself has rebranded, dropping WTS from its name, as well as remodeling its offices on Deming Way. All four of the employees who were shot are now back at work full-time. A man has been arrested in connection with the fire that destroyed a Minnesota synagogue. 
36 year old Matthew James Amiot was booked on a first degree arson charge. He will appear at St. Louis County Court in Duluth on Monday. The 119 year old Adas Israel Synagogue in Duluth went up in flames on Monday. Yesterday, officials said the fire was an arson, but it was unclear how it started. Firefighters were able to save several relics from the flames, including eight Torah scrolls important to the congregation. Domestic Abuse Intervention Services is warning Madison residents about scammers outside grocery stores. Officials say residents have reported individuals and pairs of people posing as abuse victims, asking for money to pay for counseling services. They've been spotted outside Willie Street Co-op, Festival Foods and Woodman's. Day's Executive Director Shannon Berry says the nonprofit services are confidential and free. A former Milwaukee school janitor whose gun discharged and grazed a student has been sentenced to the four days he already spent in jail. 60-year-old Heriberto Martin pleaded guilty to possessing a firearm on school grounds. This happened at St. Josephette Parish School in April. The bullet struck a fourth grade girl, leaving a small bruise, then passed through two walls and another student's backpack. A teacher and administrator tried to cover up the shooting. They were fired and charged with misdemeanor counts of failing to report child abuse. More local news now. Fall doesn't officially begin until September 23rd, but local pumpkin farms are already preparing for visitors. Farmers aren't sure how this year's pumpkin crop will turn out, but they're coming off one of the best pumpkin yields in history. According to the Wisconsin Giant Pumpkin Growers, 2018 was a record-setting crop due to a hot summer and adequate pollination. Schuster's Farm in Deerfield opens next week on Saturday. We have more information about ticket prices and activities on channel3000.com. After last year's weather made for a challenging apple season, orchards in southern Wisconsin are opening for another year of business. Rock County reporter Adam Duxter joins us now with how cold spring kept things interesting for growers. Well, Amanda, cider and donuts is somewhat synonymous with fall in the state of Wisconsin. But today I took a visit with one of Rock County's most established apple orchards to see how they are navigating with the ever-changing weather conditions. We've started picking so much. Lori Jensen and her family have been taking care of this same apple farm for 40 years now. These will be next year's apples. Over time, she's learned just what makes the perfect apple. Crunchiness, um, flavor, uh, juiciness. But also. Cool nights, warm sunny days, just all the right good weather. That weather has been an issue in years past at the Apple Hut with falls too warm and winters too long. And just as things started to bloom this past spring, the unexpected. April 27th, I remember the day clearly, we had four inches of snow. I cried. <laughs> but despite that, the apple hut is open yet again. The crop battled back and is now bringing pickers of all ages. I had a perfect one. Perfect in the owner's eyes too. So they're pretty big this year. And despite all the stress that can lead up to a crop. Leading up to apple season, you get a little bit of anxiety. You hope your apples are good, you hope your donuts are good, and you hope you're making people happy. After 40 years. Those will be apples. It's still worth it. But it's just, there's just so much joy. And Now, over the course of 40 years, Jensen says she's seen a change in weather patterns as a whole. And when I asked her what her biggest concern was moving forward, she says it's all just dependent on the weather that they get year after year. All right, Adam, thank you so much. President Trump says Osama bin Laden's son is dead. This morning, the president issued a statement confirming Hamza bin Laden was killed in a U.S. counterterrorism operation. He didn't specify exactly when or where, saying only it happened in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region. Some analysts are raising questions on the presumed death, pointing out al-Qaeda has not released a eulogy on his death. Bin Laden was thought to be an emerging leader in the terror group. More than 338,000 Ford Explorers are being recalled because the seats have sharp edges. Ford Motor Company says people could get hurt by reaching between the front seat and the center console. 31 people have been injured so far. The recall applies to 2017 Ford Explorers made in Chicago between February 2016 and October 2017. Dealers can repair that problem. 
The clock is ticking for General Motors to reach a labor agreement with workers before they strike. Negotiators only have until midnight tomorrow to iron out a deal before a four-year-old contract expires. Earlier this month, 96% of GM's workers voted to authorize a strike if a new contract isn't reached. The union wants automakers to share more of their profits with workers. Still to come on News 3 Now at 10, a celebration for the business owners on Monroe Street after a long construction season last year. They're getting a lot of their customers back at this year's festival. Welcome back. Hundreds showed their support today for those in recovery from drug and alcohol addictions at the Rally for Recovery. The rally strives to reduce the stigma associated with addiction and offers local resources to those who are interested. Wisconsin Voices for Recovery hosts the event in September, which is National Recovery Month. To encourage and uplift and celebrate um, individuals that are in recovery. There's so much stigma out there associated with this disease and our goal is just to make it uh, normalized. Addiction survivors shared their stories today and offered motivation for people looking to recover. About 50 vendors attended in an effort to help. The Aldo Leopold Nature Center had a special visitor yesterday. The center posted on Facebook that actor and comedian Nick Offerman stopped by before his show at the Orpheum Theater. He is best known for his role as Ron Swanson, a Parks Direct Department Director on the sitcom Parks and Recreation. Tomorrow he performs at the Chicago Theater. A charity bike ride is raising money for scholarships and remembering a Verona native who died nearly two years ago. Former Verona High School basketball standout Will Kellerman was killed in a rollover crash in November 2017 at the age of 21. In his memory, his parents started the Opportunity 34 Foundation, named after the number Kellerman wore on the basketball court. 
Today, the group hosted its first bike ride with options for 34 mile and 17 mile routes beginning and ending at Verona's Community Park. A $9 million expansion and renovation project at Madison's Ronald McDonald House is officially complete. The nonprofit held a special ribbon cutting ceremony today at its location on Marshall Court just off University Avenue. They say with this completion of the project, the Ronald McDonald House has doubled in size and now includes 31 guest rooms for families of children who are being treated at local hospitals. We have world-class medical care in this city, and so people come from all over the world. We've had people from all over the world stay at the Ronald House. Um, and so what this does is it provides more space. Uh, it provides that home away from home for those families, uh, and, and it's all for them. Additional features to the new expansion include a larger kitchen and dining area, new play areas, more outdoor space, and much-needed underground parking. Neighbors and businesses are connecting at the annual Monroe Street Festival, which happened today for the 42nd time. Business owners can expand their customer base and invite past customers back for sales and special deals. Event organizers say the festival is like a party for the Madison area residents who make the shops so successful. For some, the Monroe Street Festival is especially exciting this year after the nine months of road work on Monroe Street in 2018. I'm just always in awe of how much our community, not just the businesses, but the neighborhood comes together and approaches everything we do with just commitment and enthusiasm. Everything that makes Monroe Street special is celebrated at the festival. Even Henry the Lion from the Henry Vilas Zoo made an appearance today, along with live entertainment and cultural dance groups. Let's get a look at your first alert weather now with Dave Caulfield. It was nice today, but things are changing. Yeah, some thunderstorms could be on the way for some of us. An alert day is in the forecast for the overnight hours. Heavy rain possible mainly south and west of Madison as these thunderstorms form close to a warm front helped out by the low level jet. We're already starting to see some thunderstorm activity across portions of eastern Iowa. So still quiet across southern Wisconsin right now, but that could change over the next couple of hours. Now, it is worth noting that the latest forecast models have taken the axis of heavy rain basically south of the Wisconsin-Illinois state line, which is good news for Wisconsin, but we still need to be vigilant over the next couple of hours to see exactly how far north these thunderstorms form. So we do have a flash flood watch in effect for spots south and west of Madison until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Really the best chance for these showers, which could produce heavy rain, is going to be during the overnight hours. So expect to get wet around 4 to 5 a.m. Even some spots uh, north of where the flash flood warning or flash flood watch, I should say, is in effect, could see some showers and thunderstorms. It just won't be as much as uh, the spots close to the state line. But the good news is time right now or right here, I should say, is about 8 a.m. So that rain moves out of here pretty quickly on Sunday, and I think we stay dry into Monday, Tuesday, and for much of Wednesday. So we do have a chance to potentially dry out from all the rain that we received this week, and we could see a little bit more before uh, the night is up. Madison on the Edgewater Skycam looking at overcast skies. Today's high 77 degrees, so about five degrees uh, above normal. We have been below normal but today we were uh, about five degrees above normal for this time of year. In the low 60s for tonight, cloudy and mild with some showers and thunderstorms possible. I think those storms move out of here pretty quickly by tomorrow. And then by the afternoon, partly sunny, warm and humid with highs near 80. So we can see on our latest run of future track here, south and west of Madison, the best chance of seeing that thunderstorm activity and heavy rain. But really the heaviest rain continues to push south and we want to see that trend continue over the next couple of hours. I think we will. Still, though, along the state line in spots like uh, Platteville, Monroe, even Janesville into portions of Rock and Walworth County, still could be some heavy rain, and those areas just don't need any more rain after the week that we have experienced. By the time we get to Sunday afternoon, though, temperatures right around 80 degrees with partly sunny skies, and then maybe some fog to start us off on Monday after that. We get the sunshine back, temperatures in the upper 70s and low 80s. So really, not too much rain is expected uh, over the next couple of hours north of the state line, but right along the state line and into portions of Iowa and Illinois. 
the most rain uh, is likely from this round of showers and thunderstorms. We'll continue to watch it, though, because the difference of a couple of miles and that could be a big player in potential flash flooding for spots that don't need any more rain. Seven to ten day forecast temperatures staying in the low 80s as we enter next week with the humidity sticking put. We'll have some showers and thunderstorms Wednesday night into Thursday as our temperatures head back into the upper 70s and eventually mid 70s by the time we get to the weekend. That humidity really just wants to stick around. Yeah, and it won't be like typical summertime humidity, but it will be more humid than it usually is for this time this of year. Time. So summer not over yet, not still yet. 10 days to go. All right, thank you, Dave. <laughs> next on News 3 Now at 10, big game for the Brewers tonight in St. Louis. Highlights coming up next in sports. Well, the Brewers needing one back against the Cardinals after last night's 10-zip beating, and they got it tonight thanks to some work on the mound from Jordan Lyles and the bullpen. The bats helping out two in the fourth inning. Brewers down 2-0. Mike Moustakis getting a big one off of Jack Flaherty. Brings Trent Grisham home with him. Tie game. 
Fast forward to the eighth now. Brewers up one. Yasmani Grandal adding a little bit of breathing room. Five to two Brewers. That would be the final score. Rubber match tomorrow with Chase Anderson and Michael Waka on their respective mounds. First pitch at 115. Brewers now one game behind the Cubs in the wild card. The Badgers have been playing some pretty disciplined football through the first two games of the season. Wisconsin eighth in the country when it comes to the fewest penalties with five of them. So that'll be part of the game plan when it comes to hosting Michigan in seven days. The Wolverines also have a bye week this week, so they'll be plenty focused and ready to go at Camp Randall next week. So the key will be not beating yourself, according to Jonathan Taylor. Oh, really, it just shows that, you know, we're going to build upon each game. Uh, you know, don't want to take any steps uh, backward. We want to keep moving forward, and we know, you know, these, these next couple games coming up and throughout the rest of the season, we're going to have to play clean football. Um, you know, when you get guys, you know, that has talent across the board, um, like Big Ten play, you're going to have to play clean football. Who makes the less mistakes? Those are going to be the guys that come out with the win. And the fighting Lovey Smiths hosting Eastern Michigan today. Illini 2-0 to start the season. We pick it up in the fourth quarter. Illinois down two scores before they finally get it in gear. Reggie Corbin here from 28 yards out, 31-24. to Illini tie game with less than two to go. The game-winning field goal from 24 yards out. Illinois loses 34-31. to other scores around the conference today, Northwestern beating UNLV, and it was a close one in Minneapolis. The Golden Gophers scoring a late fourth quarter touchdown to beat Georgia Southern to move to 3-0. and Low scoring affair at Spartan Stadium. Herm Edwards showing that he still got it. Upsets 18th ranked Michigan State 10-7. And in the battle for the Hawkeye State, it goes to 19th ranked Iowa. The Packers are super excited to play their home opener tomorrow. Zadarius Smith told NFL Network today that he and Preston Smith want to start a new tradition when the other team is on third down. It's something the players did together as a team. It'll be on the video board at Lambeau tomorrow. So if you're headed there, make sure you pay attention. If not, plenty more chances to check it out because the Packers play five of their first seven at home. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers says he wished the home heavy schedule game came at the end of the season when the opposing team could deal with the freezing cold, but they have to take advantage of home whenever it is. We're going to have to get these early in the season to set ourselves up for some of those tough road stretches down, you know, in the back half of the season. Um, and, you know, we've got a great team coming in, and it's going to be important for us to start fast, get the home field advantage going, you know, let our defense, uh, you know, get going and rush the passer. And, um, you know, that starts with us doing our job on offense. And more fun plays in today's slate of college football games. Kansas and Mississippi State Bulldogs quarterback Garrett Schrader on fourth and 16. Tries to leap for the first down, takes a big hit, and he was airborne there. Little helicopter move. But the worst part of this for him, he was one yard short of first down. Kansas State ended up winning the game 31 to 24. Really got some air Ooh. there. Ooh. Ouch, that's going to leave a bruise. Definitely oh a little bruise. He was okay. The way he turned, like it looks fake, just the way he goes <laughs> in a circle like that. I know, I think it's just from the impact like a doll. getting hit. Yeah, pretty much. Wow. Okay. Well, I hope he's okay. I know. He's well, okay. Good. We'll be right back.
Officials say rebuilding the Bahamas after the damage of Hurricane Dorian earlier this month could cost billions of dollars. But one Florida chef is looking to raise the spirits of residents. Eric Pedersen, chef and owner of Evo Italian in Tequestra, Tequesta, Florida, says when he saw the destruction Dorian caused, he was heartbroken. So he decided the best way he could help was to do what he does best, cook. Only this time he's doing it not only to make something delicious, but to make someone's day and cook with some of the kids. What a great story. He's helping just get their mind off of it, too, and have a little, a little yeah. fun. Yeah, and so much devastation uh, in the Bahamas over the last couple of weeks. It's nice to see a positive story yeah. so they can continue to rebuild there. Definitely. We have some rain across southern Wisconsin on the way. High-resolution Doppler over the last hour starting to show some of those thunderstorms form across northeastern Iowa. They're tracking to the northeast, so we'll see just how far north this line of showers and thunderstorms does form as it moves into southern Wisconsin overnight. Some heavy rain is possible, especially south and west of Madison with a flash flood watch in effect until tomorrow morning. 7 to 10 day forecast showing the humidity sticking around with highs in the 80s to start the week. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great night.